Okay, uh, this is our plasma test rig that I made up for Brian. So Brian can do some tests with plugs as he comes up with prototypes. And um, let me get this extra stuff out of the way here so I can use it. I'm packing it with an extra diode strip um, and an extra micro switch. Just real quick, I'm going to show um, the operation. I can turn on 12 volts there. See the switch I have right there for the 12 volts. And I have a trigger switch over here on this side. You see this trigger switch here. And when I hit that trigger switch, you see the spark. Every time I hit this trigger, it sparks. Now that trigger switch is just using a uh, uh, micro switch and firing a micro switch instead of a set of points and distributor. So this takes the place of the points and distributor. Still gives you your spark. Now we can turn on the AC. That's the plasma. So we get about 10 or 15 hits before we get the big poof. But it's pretty good. See there. Every once in a while you get that big poof. Now I always clear the uh, capacitor by firing it a couple times after I shut off the AC power. Fire it a couple times just to discharge the capacitor. Um, then make sure you shut off your 12 volts because if you leave the 12 volts on your uh, coil will always be hot. Anytime this switch is on the coil is hot. So this coil actually I'm getting some voltage there that I shouldn't be touching that. Okay so be careful with your setup and uh, you can see this I'm still getting a shock. It must be the, the capacitor discharging to it. I don't, I'm not sure. Maybe something's touching something. Okay. Anyway. So uh, this is a simplified version of the plasma setup. You've got your 12 volt coil. Uh, the 12 volt coil is hooked up to um, let's see 12, 12 volt coils hooked up normally to the uh, uh, the high voltage side going to the high voltage side of the plug and um, you know your switch turns on the power uh, to the ground leg of the coil um, and here I have a diode placed on the ground side of the uh, battery for the 12 volt system to keep anything from going back on the ground leg because we have AC on the ground leg so we put a diode here to stop the AC from getting past and getting to the um, negative terminal on the battery and causing problems with that. Um, we just got our standard switch here where we switch the hot AC that goes from here to our capacitor and then from the capacitor to ground that's the hot now the hot doesn't have any diodes in line. Well, actually the hot does have a diode right here. Um, from the switch to the diode, from the switch to the capacitor, there's a diode right there. Um, that helps to eliminate misfires. And then from the capacitor to ground. That is the hot AC. The white wire that you see here is the common AC wire that goes to the capacitor from the switch, uh, actually it doesn't go from the switch, that goes straight from your AC line coming in, that's the wire here. The common goes right to the capacitor and then out of the capacitor through our diode strip which blocks the high voltage DC from going back into this capacitor and overcharging it. Um, so you got your diode strip on the uh, common side going straight to the high voltage lead here. Okay, so you go uh, white wire to the capacitor and then from the capacitor diode strip to the high, vo high voltage side of the plug. And that is the 
common AC. The hot AC goes through a diode to the capacitor, from the capacitor to ground. And this plate grounds everything the same, so it's a common ground for everything, the AC and the DC. Really the AC doesn't share the ground here because the common is going to the other side of your spark plug, so it's not touching. So you've got the only continuity that you ever have is the spark gap. When that spark allows the path to flow, the AC jumps across. There's not a physical connection. If there was a physical connection, you'd short out your AC circuit because you'd be throwing AC straight to ground. So if the gap at the spark plug is too narrow, the electrode can fuse across and cause a direct short. So we always want to be mindful of that, that we have a big enough gap and that we don't overwork the uh, spark plug and start to get uh, build up of slag right there because slag will conduct and that will cause um, a short and we don't want that. Alright so I'm going to go ahead and uh, zoom in 